Hello, my name is Sarah Young, and please join me on a river cruise on the Danube River as it flows along five Eastern European countries, Romania, Bulgaria, Serbia, Croatia, and Hungary. During this journey, we will explore 2,000 years of often turbulent European history as we are introduced to the coexistence of many ethnic groups, each with their own language and culture. Just prior to boarding our river ship, we visit Bucharest, the capital and largest city in Romania, as well as its cultural, industrial, and financial center. Its architecture is a mix of the historic, communist era, and modern structures including the iconic and controversial landmark, the colossal Palace of the Parliament, arguably the largest administrative building in the world. Bucharest's history has alternated between periods of development and decline. Famous for its wide boulevards and cosmopolitan lifestyle, Bucharest was known as Little Paris during the first part of the 20th century. In a sense, our cruise follows the reverse flow of the Danube. We begin at its mouth where the Danube empties into the Black Sea. Constanta is Romania's largest and most important city on the Black Sea. It is also the oldest inhabited city in the country, founded by the Greeks in the 6th century BC. Legend has it that Jason landed here after finding the Golden Fleece. to establish a navigable waterway connecting the Danube to the Black Sea. The Black Sea Canal construction began in the late 1940s. However, the canal construction was also notorious as a site of labor camps in the 1950s communist Romania when tens of thousands of political prisoners worked on the excavation. The next country that we visit is the Balkan nation of Bulgaria, a country of varied urban and rural settings. Hillside medieval capital of Veliko Turnovo is an artistic enclave of craft workshops and galleries. Bulgaria is a melting pot of Greek, Slavic, Ottoman, and Persian influences. This fortress was not a closed defensive fortress, but in fact it was a medieval town, and today we can see either the reconstruction or the remains of over 400 houses, 18 churches, and a royal palace. Rus is an elegant European-styled city with historic architecture and welcoming parks.
After reboarding Grand Circle's River Adagio, we continue on the Danube, Europe's second largest river. It ranges in depth from 3 feet to 26 feet. Bulgarian city, Vidin, has an eclectic architectural and cultural heritage. It is a city close to the Romanian and Serbian borders. Built between the 10th and 13th century, the Baba Vida Fortress is one of the best preserved castles in Bulgaria and a popular site for shooting movies. The city of Vidin is also an example of religious complexity with active churches and a mosque but also an abandoned Jewish synagogue, originally established by a Jewish community fleeing Spain. Continuing on, we enter a once non-navigable portion of the Danube. This gorge is now known as the Iron Gates. It is an 83 mile long stretch of the river. In order to create a navigable waterway, a joint Romanian-Yugoslavian project commenced in 1964 to tame the waters. The first Iron Gate opened in 1972, followed by Iron Gate 2 in 1984. They also added two hydroelectric plants and navigation locks. The Roman plaque commemorates the completion of Trajan's military road on the Serbian side of the Danube. While this 20th century sculpture celebrates Decebalus, the last king of Dacia, who fought against Trajan. Although local flora and fauna were affected, the Iron Gates have created a commercially viable waterway. Arriving in the Serbian capital Belgrade, we witness the city building towards a brighter future amidst a chaotic past. We see socialist blocks among the Art Nouveau masterpieces. And as elsewhere along the Danube, the fortress is the core and oldest section of urban Belgrade. For 35 years, Marshal Tito held together the then country of Yugoslavia, despite its mix of nationalities, languages, and religions. When he died, the list of mourners read like a roll call of world leaders. For over three centuries, Novi Sad has been a treasured regional and cultural center. And throughout the center part of the city, we see blended examples of such architectural styles as Baroque, Neo-Renaissance, and Bauhaus buildings. And, of course, as elsewhere on the Danube, a history-rich fortress. This picturesque village, located 10 miles outside of Novosad, is not only a city of vineyards, but it is also a spiritual center. And in the past, due to its closeness to Austria, it was an important part of the Habsburg-ruled Viennese court.
and then we travel on to Croatia and the city of Vukovar. This beautiful Baroque city saw the worst years of its turbulent history during the Croatian-Serbian War of the 1990s. However, its unwavering spirit continues as it rebuilds to its former glory. The last city to visit on our journey is Budapest, the largest city in Hungary. It is a city blessed with an abundance of hot springs and is often known as a city of baths. In addition, due to its man-made beauty, it is also known as the Paris of the East. And yet another name is the Pearl of the Danube. The Fisherman Bastion is a Neo-Gothic and Neo-Romanesque terrace with seven towers representing the seven tribes that settled in this area around the year 896 AD. It is called Fisherman Bastion because the Fisherman's Guild was charged with defending this stretch of the city walls during the Middle Ages. More than 20% of Hungary's population live in Budapest. Market Hall is the oldest and largest indoor market in Budapest. In this three-story building, vendors sell fruits, meats, vegetables, cheeses. There are restaurants, there are souvenir shops, and of course you can purchase the Hungarian spice paprika which is actually native to the Americas. Art and culture are prevalent. There are more than 40 theaters and 100 museums and galleries in Budapest. After Hungary lost much of its territory after World War I, the Jewish population remained the most visible minority and thus was made a scapegoat for all that had happened. During World War II, German troops occupied Hungary. Hungarian citizens collaborated. Nearly 50% of Budapest Jewish population died during the Holocaust. An upside-down menorah, this Tree of Life sculpture, has 4,000 leaves bearing the names of Jewish victims. Throughout the city, monuments continue to memorialize the Holocaust. Never forgetting its past, the city continues to explore its current vibrant vitality. With our cruise along the Danube being over much too quickly, we reminisce that this has also been an exposure to Eastern European history. Along the way we have been pampered by the crew of our river ship. Our captain and our program directors, especially my group's director, Kareel, have provided a perceptive overview 
to the traditions and history of the region, as well as an introduction to a few of its delightful people. With a tapestry of Greek, Roman, Celtic, Mongol, Ottoman, and Habsburg histories, it is as if every nation, city, building, house, and street have a story to tell. And all of these historic and ethnic contributions have left the mark of their traditions forever weaving them into the riches of the Danube Basin. An amazing journey indeed. <music>